So Jesus asks the man. Verse 20 says, what is written in the law? And the next question that Jesus asks him, how readest thou? Do you actually read the law? Not only what is written, but do you read? And the man answered and said, Now the man is going to tell him he knows the law. So the man answered and said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind. And after that, you must as well try to love your neighbor as yourself. So the man was completely versed in the scripture. He knew the scripture. So once the man just finished saying that, Jesus answered unto him, verse 28. Jesus said, well then, thou have answered right. Do this do, and thou shalt live. But the man understood there was something missing. Listen to this carefully. Jesus did not grant or tell the man that if you do those things, you have eternal life. Jesus said, if you do those things, you will live. Somebody said, but what is the difference between eternal life and living? You see, when you go to the scripture, walking in the presence of God and fearing the God and being righteous to God, God grants you a longer life. That you might find favor in the sight of God, but that does not mean you have eternal life. Because eternal life is not physical. Eternal life is not what happened today. So a child may die, but the child may have eternal life. Because we are not talking about this mortal state of man. We're talking about an elevated state of man. And the Bible says, and we shall be all changed by the sound of a trumpet. So we are talking about something deep. Now, the man came to ask for a question. However, being a lawyer, he had no understanding of the meaning, the words that he had uttered before the all-knowing, almighty, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So his knowledge was a bit twitched, limited. So Jesus said, if you do all those things, you might, you may live. You will not die young. You will live longer. Because why? The Bible says, honor thy mother and thy father. For, for, so that you, the days of your, of your days here shall be longer, shall be prolonged. Do you understand? When you do those things, there was no way in the scripture that God promised eternal life after he gave the Ten Commandments. There is nowhere. 
Are you paying attention? There is no way that God promised eternal life that if you follow this commandment, you will have eternity with me. There is no way. Eternity was given or came into place after the resurrection and the death of Christ. With Christ came eternity. But with law came long life. Are you paying attention? So when the man came, he asked about the law. But this question was not about the law, but was about for eternity. He wanted to be eternal, have eternal life, have a time to live eternity. But he was following a law that does not guarantee that eternity, but guarantee longevity. So Jesus told the man that you will not have eternal life. But if you do those things that you just told me, you will leave. So Jesus went back to the scripture and told the man that doing all these things and pleasing God, your days will be what? Extended. And you have favor before God. But that does not grant you that eternity. Because eternity is given to by me, not by the law. But the man, of course, did not understand it perfectly. Because after all, he's just a lawyer. He's a Jew. And he saw Jesus as, as another learned law, lawyer, a learned colleague that he could try and chop him down. So after that conversation happened, the man wanted more because, because he couldn't chop Jesus down. So he wanted more. Verse 29. But he Willing to justify himself. Are you getting it? So how about me, 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 me. He willing to justify himself. Said unto Jesus. Now Jesus. Verse 29. And who is my neighbor? Now, this is, this is a very big question. I believe that most of you have thought about this question thousands of times. And we all fall foul and shock when we come, it comes to determine who is our neighbor and who is not. If you ask somebody who is your neighbor, I say my next door neighbor. Who is my neighbor? Maybe my colleague from work. Who is my neighbor? Oh, someone that my acquaintance, some people that I might have seen or met on the road somewhere. I, I, I can't recall. So the man just asked Jesus, the lawyer said, Jesus, okay, fine. Rabbi, you've done well, but who, who actually is my neighbor? He wanted to know. Even though he wanted to know to justify himself, to make it a point to Jesus that what we have seen in the law The higher standard of the law is not possible. Because the law, if we are going to follow what is written in the law, 
None of us will be able to please God. This is what the man was saying without him saying. Without, under, without even understanding the purpose of which Jesus was there. Because Jesus came to fulfill the law and the standard of the law. When a man asks Jesus, who is my neighbor? Now Jesus has to take this feather to bring heavenly things into physical things. To bring it to a way that it will make sense to mortal man. Verse 30. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Verse 30. And Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him. And the thief departed and lived, leaving him half dead. And by chance they came down a certain priest. Now, if the Bible is for you, I want you to underline certain words. I want you to underline the words Jerusalem, Jericho, thieves, raiment, and half dead. Verse 31, I want you to underline the word certain priest. And by chance, there came a certain priest. Color it up, underline it, very important. Came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he saw journey, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. Oh, verse 32, sorry. Likewise, a Levite, when he came at the place, he came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. Okay. So, verse 33. And the city Samaritan, as he saw Jenny, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And went to him and bound his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his feet, on his beast. And brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence. And gave to the host and said unto him, Take out of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I shall repay thee. Now Jesus asked the question, Which now of these three thinkest thou? was the neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves. Hallelujah. The first thing I want to dispel here is that a lot of preachers have been saying certain things that I want to just tell you that the Bible did not say so. All right? Now people get confused. And we're going to go to the scripture and look at the scripture carefully. <laughs> Some people say that the man was in Jerusalem. When the man was in Jerusalem, the man departed from Jerusalem to go to Jericho. And when you look at the scripture, people have been making the analogy or some exegesis. Now Jerusalem is on the hill. And when the man went down the hill, he went away from the kingdom of God. He went away from the presence of God. You can say that, but that's not scripture. That's not scripture. Because Jericho is also on a hill. You see, 
Jerusalem is on a hill. So does also Jericho. So you cannot say that he was moving from the presence of God to the place of the devil. Because it was on a hill. This is the, this is the point I'm trying to make. It is not because it's on the hill, but it's deeper than a hill. Because if you are making a point based on the hill, then you have not allowed the scripture and the, the spirit of God to actually plunge you down into the word of God. I know. I know some preachers just repeat what they hear other preachers say. And this is one of the bigger issues we have in Christianity. That instead of going to the scripture, I mean, it's quite easy to hear someone parroting something and you also repeating that thing, whether you understand it or not. But that's not Christianity. Because you have to go before the king of kings with your cup lifted up and you allow the spirit of God to speak to you. Joshua chapter 2 verse 5 and 7. Let's go to the scripture. The book of Joshua chapter 2 verse 5 and 7. And it came to pass about the time of shutting of the gate. When it was dark and the men went out. Whither two, whither the men went, I would not. Pursue after them quickly, for ye shall overtake them. But he has, she has brought them up to the roof of the house, and hid them with a stalk of flies, which she had laid in order upon the roof. And the men pursue after them the way of Jordan before the falls. And as soon as they which pursued them, pursue after them were gone out, they shut the gate. And before they were laid down, she came up unto them upon the roof. And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord had given you the land and that your terror is falling upon us and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you and ye came out of Egypt and what ye did unto the kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of Sihon and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed. This is the information or the conversation between Rahab and the children of Israel that were sent to Jericho to spy. This is the information between, the conversation between them. Okay? This is the conversation between them. So, let's continue. Verse 15. And she let them down by a cord through the window. For her house was upon the town hall. And she dwelt upon the wall. And she said unto them, Get ye out to the mountains. Let the pursuers meet you. And hide yourself there three days. Until the pursuers be returned. And afterward you may go your way. This is a conversation that happened between Rahab and the Jews. Which is Caleb, Joshua and the rest of them. When they went to Jericho to spy. We are reading from also Jericho, uh, Joshua chapter 6, verse 5. 
And it shall come to pass that when thou make a long blast with a ram horn, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout a great shout. The walls of the city shall fall flat, and the people shall ascend up every 